I have a question or comment. Um, it was asked in connection with my video about whether non-dual teachers have a mental illness, where I talk about the concept of a reality simulator. Can you explain how the following is relevant to a simulator? There is a certain number of kilograms a person can deadlift. One person can do max 100 kilo, the other can do 220 kilo. What is simulated about this? The simulator paradigm is typically used for seeing things. How about we stop using the amorphous phenomenon of sight and talk about getting real things done? No matter what you say, think, believe. You, sir, I strongly doubt can de deadlift 250 kilo. No, I can't. Even if someone was holding a gun to your head. Uh, no, there isn't. There are other people who can do this with relative ease. This is but one among infinite examples. Who wrote the song, Hey Jude, are you 13 years old now? If you fall from a 200 meter height onto concrete, your body will destruct and you will die, etc. What are we to make of these raw facts? How can one dismiss their inherent factuality? Straight answer, please. Well, the straight answer is that the idea of a reality simulator is an analogy. And an analogy is meant to illustrate a point. If you use the linear mind, the intellectual mind, to take it literally, you will miss the point. So if you actually watch my videos where I talk about a reality simulator, you'll see that I'm using that idea in a different way than some of these non-duality teachers or some other spiritual teachers. Because what they will say, some of them, is that everything we experience is created in our minds. In other words, the world isn't actually there. It's all a creation of the mind. And as the questioner points out, that ob obviously contradicts common facts. So the way I'm using the analogy of a reality simulator is that uh, we are inside an actual environment. There is an environment. If you go into a flight simulator, there is what looks like an airplane cockpit with buttons and switches and this and that. So there is something you are interacting with. And in our case, uh, there is a physical environment and we have physical bodies that are created from the same energies that are, as our physical environment. And that's why the physical environment sets some limitations for the capabilities of our physical bodies. And this is actually part of the whole point of how I am using the analogy of a reality simulator. Because the purpose, in my explanation, of the reality simulator is our growth in consciousness. And in order to grow in consciousness, we have to be in some kind of environment where there's something we relate to. And as I also explained, there, there's an entire spiritual realm beyond this physical material world um, where there are other kinds of experiences we can have. But we who are in embodiment on Earth, this is our environment. And uh, we are actually minds. We are, I won't say souls because that word has been used in so many different ways, but we are life streams that our real identity is a mind. It's actually our higher self, which uh, is in the spiritual realm. But we have the part of us that is conscious, I call it the conscious you, we have descended into a physical body. We have taken on the identity body, the mental body, the emotional body, and then the physical. And we are interacting with this environment. Now, if you really step back from this, you will see, as Einstein said in 1905, everything is made out of energy. So all of these physical limitations, they are really a product of the fact that our physical senses are attuned to this energy spectrum that makes up the physical universe. So it is possible to uh, sharpen our higher senses, our intuition, so we can experience that there's something beyond the material world, that we are beyond the material world, that we are more than our physical bodies. And so the, the way I use the analogy of a reality simulator is that instead of being in an environment 
that is not responsive to us, to our state of mind. We are in an environment that does respond to mind. Now, the traditional religious uh, worldview will say that God created the world and God has infinite powers and there's nothing we can do about it. It just is the way it is. Materialism will say uh, the world came about because of laws of nature that we have nothing to do with. Both of these views are disempowering because either there is Either the only way to change our physical environment is raw force, as materialism says, or praying to some god who might or might not answer. So the uh, reality simulator analogy is beyond both of them. It's empowering because it says our environment does respond to our state of consciousness. Now there are still, and I have said this in several videos, there are still some things that we can change with the mind partly because humankind has collectively co-created the current conditions on Earth. So the lack of resources, the poverty, is something that is co-created because humankind descended into a lower state of consciousness. I explained this in my, in my video about how the world was created. And you can't individually override that. But that doesn't matter in a sense because the purpose of Earth is our growth in consciousness. The purpose is not, there's no higher purpose that says certain conditions have to be manifest. The, the physical conditions are not the primary point about Earth. And this is what many people misunderstand, and that's why the uh, simulator analogy is fruitful. The primary purpose of Earth is our growth in consciousness. And where does our growth in consciousness happen? It happens inside our minds. So, it's not the purpose of Earth to produce specific physical conditions, but to produce a specific experience in our minds so we can have a certain experience for as long as we want until we've had enough of it and we want more, and then we raise our consciousness. So, um, it's not really a matter of, you know, what really we could say is, that if you look at humankind, most people are identified with their physical bodies and with a physical environment. And that's again partly because their senses are tuned to this, but also because they have been uh, programmed with a worldview that describes this physical environment as either created by a god or by laws of nature. So people are, most people are focused on this. The whole idea of a spiritual path or a process of awakening and that's what I say about the reality simulator, most people are in the um, immersion phase, where they feel this is a real world they're in, there's nothing they can do about it. But the other phase is the awakening phase. And the whole idea of the awakening phase is that we first uh, disidentify ourselves from our physical bodies, we realize we are more than the physical bodies. As I said, basically most spiritual teachings on the planet, they will say, we are a being that is inhabiting temporarily a physical body. Most will also say that we have inhabited many bodies in the past. And so the purpose of this is that by being in a body, we, we gain experiences that helps us expand our sense of self. And when we start uh, awakening, we first realize we are more than the physical body. But then we are still in the mind. And gradually we come to realize we're actually more than our emotions, which allows us to take control of our emotions instead of being controlled by them. You can see there are some, you can see some people are focused on the physical, some people are focused on emotions, some people are focused on thoughts. And so first we disidentify from the physical, then the emotions, then we disidentify from our thoughts. We realize we are more than our thoughts. In other words, I am thinking, Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. But uh, the I is more than the thinking. And then at the uh, final level, we realize we're even more than our deepest sense of identity as human beings, as limited beings. So <clears throat> if you look at the world, you can find people, <clears throat> and I remember seeing this even as a child, because I don't remember the exact situation, but I saw something on television about a man who was in a wheelchair. And he was positive. And he had used this as an opportunity, even trying to do something for others. And I realized that many people who are, were in that situation would get bitter and angry 
But here was a person who had not turned bitter and angry. He had used it as a positive. So that's when I started realizing that even the same physical conditions can give rise to different experiences in people's minds. So in a sense, you could say, we all have the same physical conditions that are produced by the simulator. But the real point of the whole thing is how we experience those conditions in our minds, how we relate to them, whether we identify with them, whether we think we are limited by them or not. So the point really isn't to change the physical conditions as much as is changing our experience of it, and thereby demonstrating to others that we don't have to be trapped in our current sense of self, our current worldview. That's the whole point. And that's why the uh, reality simulator analogy can be helpful to people at a certain level. It, most people, it will not be helpful to them because they are not, they're still in immersion. They're not ready to awaken. But when you start to awaken, it can be helpful to realize that, as I said, there are certain physical conditions, but the real point is how we experience it. What experience do we have in our minds? And here's the, here's the real dividing line. People who are in immersion, they will think their state of mind depends on their physical conditions. If you're in a wheelchair, you can only be angry and bitter about it. If you are poor, you can only feel angry or disempowered. So they will say, in order to change my state of mind and be happy, I have to have these outer conditions. And that's what you see in the world. People are chasing these outer conditions. Now, I grew up in Denmark, which is one of the more affluent countries in the world. And I grew up among people who, you know, my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation were quite poor. But I grew up among people who were having quite a lot of uh, material abundance. And many of them went into this chasing, you know, if we just get a bigger house, if we just get a bigger car, if we get a summer house, if we can travel, all of these things. But many people have been doing this for decades and they haven't become happier. And at least some are beginning to realize that this didn't make them happy. So in other words, once we go into the awakening phase, it's when we start realizing, no, the physical conditions are what the physical conditions are. But they don't have to determine our state of mind because we have the option, we have the potential to take command over our state of mind so we can choose our state of mind regardless of the physical conditions. That is really the point of the reality simulator analogy. And then the awakening phase, what I call the spiritual path, is all about doing that. You start from wherever you are at and then you gradually expand your sense of self, you gradually disidentify from the physical, emotional, mental and identity until you get to the point where you can now control your state of mind regardless of physical conditions. That's the point of the reality simulator analogy. And you know, if, if you want to really step back from it, you can say that, uh, again, the traditional view of religion, God created the world exactly as it is, and our minds have nothing to do with it, or the view of materialism that natural, natural processes, natural laws created the world as it is, and our minds have nothing to do with it, those are both disempowering. Uh, when you take the reality simulator analogy, you realize that uh, the world, as I explain in my video about how the world is created, the world was created by beings in the spiritual realm, the ascended masters. They created this out of their own beings. There is no, there's no laws of nature that says the world has to be created a certain way. The ascended master actually defined the laws of nature as they were creating the world. So it is a creation of their minds. So in a sense, you could say, the world is a creation of mind, but it is not a creation of our minds because we are not at the level where we have the co-creative abilities to create a world. This is only ascended masters at a fairly high level, not just the level of, of right above Earth, but at a fairly high level that can do this. And so 
So from that perspective, you can say everything is created out of mind. But, and the important point of that is that the purpose of creating the Earth or the entire understanding sphere is to give us an environment that we can relate to and where we can exercise our co-creative abilities. The problem is, once you fall into separation, as I explained in many of my videos, you go into this illusion, you're a separate being, you don't see yourself as a co-creator. You feel you are a victim. You are a, in other words, the simulator was meant to be a tool for helping you rise in consciousness. But when you go into separation, the tool becomes the tyrant. You are now a victim of the simulated environment. Because instead of realizing that you can interact with it and you are actually meant to co-create, uh, built onto the environment that you are put into, you now think you are a victim of it. And therefore, you know, humankind has gone into this downward spiral where we have actually densified matter so that we have all of these limitations of lack of resources, poverty, and all these kind of things. So, um, you know, this, this is really the essence of the analogy of the reality simulator. And the question really is, uh, are you ready to take responsibility for your own state of mind? and the way you relate to the simulator. If you're not, you can find all kinds of arguments to deny it, but that only proves one thing. You are still in immersion. You haven't had enough of feeling like a victim. So an analogy, I, I'm not using the analogy to try to persuade people who are in immersion that they should not be in immersion. They have been given free will. They have a right to be in immersion for as long as they want. It's not my concern. I'm only uh, seeking to help those who, like myself, when I was 18, have started to go into awakening and are looking for some way to help change their life experience. And that's why the analogy of a reality simulator can be very helpful because it tells you you are in an environment that responds to your state of mind. This doesn't mean that with our state of mind, we can change our physical body so we can deadlift 250 kilo. That's not the point. The point is we can change our experience of life so that regardless of our physical conditions, we can have a positive, self-transcending experience that helps us expand our sense of self. That's the whole purpose. So I hope that was a straight answer.